Hello everyone and welcome back to the Magenta Aura community. My name is Sky, and I help people expand their consciousness outside the typical confines of their belief system, right? So today I wanted to go over meditation. One of my beautiful uh, listeners and learners um, wanted me to go over, you know, why it's important to meditate. And so I thought I would, you know, just throw out there a little two cents. It won't be uh, too long of a video, but you know, it's such a convoluted subject. I could talk for hours about why we should meditate. So, you know, starting off with, although um, it may seem like uh, to the naked human eye, like everything is solid, um, on a more energetic level, um, energy moves and flows in different patterns and different ways um, to get life force energy to all of your cells, right? And chakras and meridians actually uh, assist us in this process. But um, we can carry around physical vibrations in our body that can actually block uh, the natural energy flow um, to our cells, right? Which means uh, our physical cells uh, aren't getting enough life force, meaning our body on a biochemical level is not functioning nearly as properly as it could um, with its full potential of life force energy flow, right? So it's not functioning at its highest capacity, and this is called being in a state of resistance, right? So now this is where meditation plays a key role, um, basically in helping you uh, get rid of all your blockages and restore proper energy flow to certain areas of your body. So for more on the subject of energetic blockages to better understand this concept, I recommend going back and watching my video um, titled Energetic Blockages, What is an Energetic Blockage? Meditation helps you move from a state of resistance into a state of allowance, right? And this is uh, because this is one of the many ways that we can alter our life force energy flow through meditation. There's other ways like breath work and you know other stuff, but meditation is one of the easiest and best ways to kind of um, get that life force energy flow flowing, right? So ever since humans uh, started consciously observing the mind, um, it's been established that there is an experiencer aspect of the mind and an observer aspect of the mind. And we refer, uh, in spirituality and psychology both, we refer to the observer mind as the subconscious, your soul, your own consciousness, um, etc., right? Your higher self. We refer to the experiencer position um, as our body, as the ego, right? So in ancient and modern spiritual practices all over the world, they teach us that it is important to be completely aware of this um, observer or subconscious um, position or aspect of your mind, right? And aware of that observer aspect um, helps us to observe and experience situations and not have to get uh, immersed in the emotion and the chaos and all that of the moment, right? So, you know, Buddhist monks, for example, have trained through meditation to quiet that experiencer aspect of the mind, aka the ego, and kind of take a step back out of that um, first person narrative, right? And just kind of observe the emotions that arise. This means that they can act. Uh, with a lot more mindfulness and logic because um, they're responding to situations um, and emotions instead of reacting. Responding and reacting are two completely different things. So how many times um, have you just reacted uh, to something or somebody, a situation, off of just your emotions and you had to like go back and apologize later? You had to be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I was just emotional or, you know, whatever. Or you, you feel guilty of how you acted while you were caught up in your emotions, right? So you're able to see the bigger picture a little bit later. Um, you're able to see that better when your emotions kind of calm themselves down and you're able to kind of mull things over and you're kind of once you pull the emotions out of it you're you're from more of that observer position more of a third party more seeing it objectively so with that being said you do not want to use the subconscious or the higher self or you you don't want to use meditation 
um, as a way to escape. We don't want to participate in escapism, right? There's a big difference. We want to have a really healthy balance um, if we want to live a healthy lifestyle of the switching back and forth between that first person and that third person perspective. If you're always in that first person perspective, you're never going to be able to see a bigger picture or understand what other people are referring to or be able to accept other people's beliefs. Um, you will not be able to take a step back and put yourself in their shoes and be able to empathize with others as well right um, but if you're always living in that third perspective obviously we don't want to be too detached from our life too detached um, from our emotions we don't want to be you know robots right we still want to be compassionate and uh, empathize with others and connect with others as well um, but there's a time and a place guys so i just kind of wanted to throw that out there so if you want uh, to connect with more like-minded individuals, um, I will leave the link for my Instagram page and the Facebook group below. Um, if you also want to get more like a better interpretation for you on a personal level where you're at energetically or you have any questions or you want to see me do videos on certain subjects, definitely, definitely. Um, leave that down in the comments or you can check out my website. The link is below. And so I hope you all have an amazing day. Namaste, friends. Meditate. <laughs>